<coughs> Excuse me. Pardon me, Scorpio. Uh, this is for you, Scorpio. This is Terra Illumination. This is your general report, March 2018. You know the drill. You've seen these before. Watch for your sun, moon, and rising. Reinterpret to suit yourself. Even do the cross-watching if you want to for significant others, however you want to do this. It's your reading for you guys, okay? Now, <coughs> we've done this for all the other... Uh, videos in this uh, playlist because of what's happening here in March. Uh, there's a very strong emphasis on healing because the Sun and Neptune are going to be very close and Chiron as well. And we have a massive... Oh, I'll just show you. Gosh. Okay, look. So here you go, Scorpio. Look. There we are. This is like a universal chart. Oh, well, there's, there's the Pisces energy over here. Uh, so we have a massive cluster, especially Feb 25th to March 4th, but even right towards the end of March, I think March 17, we got the big uh, Pisces new moon. So uh, in general, it's a strong emphasis on Pisces Neptune energy, Sun, uh, Neptune, uh, Mercury, Venus, Chiron, and then eventually the moon here as well. Uh, I think it's the 17th of March. So please pay very, very close attention, Scorpio. The thing about this particular pattern, I feel, is that even though the Pisces energy is typically very harmonious for you, Scorpio, it's just a, you know, it's a water sign like you. The thing is, with the Chiron thing going on, I think uh, where it's happening in your fifth house, uh, you could witness like a double-sided thing where you can see all these beautiful things happening, like in your place of true love love romance and literally uh, love and this is not a love reading but it's going to be a very strong emphasis on that part of your life business creativity self-expression risk happiness uh, joy the feelings of joy but also a deep awareness of uh, what's not working there because everything's going to be lit up the whole house the whole of your fifth house is going to be seriously lit up uh, with a, an emphasis on uh, with the Chiron thing about what's not working there. So please see this as a tremendous opportunity for you. You might be one of the lucky ones through March, Scorpio, in that you do get to uh, enjoy a lot of the benefits of this transit and and, and also uh, in, in both ways, in terms of the healing and the, and the benefits, just simply because it's so harmonious for you. So let's go for it. No jumpers, no pliers, no oracles, no reversals, not enough time, not enough room. We're going to use that journey of the heart spread, okay, where every beat of the heart counts, where it's all about you uh, nurturing yourself, loving yourself first, which is paramount <clears throat> to, to a good life, to a life well lived. You don't have to be constantly, uh, you know, giving it away. Cards are already shuffled, okay? We're going to go into it. Terra Illumination Angels are here, okay? And I invite you to bring your own into the room as well. And so we can make it a team effort. All right, here we go. Core, heart, soul, energy, all right? Pulsing, 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 pulsing. Always needing what it needs. Always uh, pumping out what it doesn't need. Uh, the nutrients and the waste. Nutrients in, waste out. Okay, that's kind of your life anyway, uh, Scorpio. You're very much a, a very alchemical kind of soul about uh, processing waste. Legacy energy. What are you bringing in with you, Scorpio? Uh, you know, we had the Leo Aquarius eclipses, and they might have been pretty bumpy on you because those are hard squares for you. Who knows, maybe you got through it and you're already healing coming out the other side, but it is a long-term cycle. It's a big wave and it's going to uh, repeat echo again uh, in the middle of the year with the Leo Aquarius axis again. But on top of that wave is the Pisces wave happening right now. So it's kind of a weird combo. What about the now? This is the ever-present now where you hold all your power. Okay, and over here where you're holding out your power is where you get to express your power through the healing power of your decisions. So heartbeat by heartbeat, how are you going to make your decisions? How exactly are you going to do that in a way that works for you? So literally, you're feeding and nurturing your heart here. And of course, if we do it effectively, consequently, what do we get? Okay. Well, you're going to get this kind of energy, whatever. The thing is that this is sort of 
to do with consequential energy from just living the journey itself. You know, whether you make good or bad decisions. <clears throat> but what I, the point I'm trying to make here is if you are, are one of those people, you outsource your decisions, you outsource your life to other people, other entities, and all your decisions are made for you, then your life could feel like fate. Otherwise, um, like if something great happens, oh, well, it's just faded. If something awful happens, well, it's just faded. You know, it just happened, you know. And then all this, this becomes redundant, you know. But what's the point of being alive? You know, this is an amazing gift we have to be alive on this planet. It's a mind-boggling experience. And we're here to make the most of it, healing ourselves, providing uh, love and healing to others. So what if you mess up on your decisions? There's, what are you going to lose? What if you make good, consistent, loving, self-nurturing decisions? How does that work for you? And what does this take us into for the next pulse, the next beat of the heart? Please see the heart shape there, okay? And please see this heart pumping at the very core. The heart knows what it needs, knows what it wants, even if you don't. Hopefully you're going to get really tuned into the heart energy. So many of us need to start to live from our heart outwards, not from our brain, okay? Well, less from our brain, because all of that stuff doesn't matter, because if the heart is uh, undernourished or impoverished, then nothing else matters. Circumstantial energy. We have the five of wands. Think of this as weather, Scorpio. This could be really, really what I would say is good weather for you. It's almost like Olympic type weather where, yes, circumstances might be very, very challenging, like if you're an athlete in the Olympics. But the circumstances are good because it's going to bring out the best in you. You're going to be having a chance to really, really like express yourself uh, in, a, in a challenging environment. And sometimes that's the best way for us to learn and grow, where we deliberately embrace the opportunity of the surroundings. Like we, where, like if you can sense, Scorpio, like you are kind of in a really fortuitous spot right now where you can see the challenges, but you can also see how this is a great opportunity for you to, let's say, uh, enjoy this and uh, show your best side here, okay? Let's have a look at the core, what's going on here. Okay, I feel appreciation here where it's almost like the heart is saying, I know who I am, I know what I've got, and I want to be appreciated and loved by others in the way that I love and appreciate others. I know that I am a work in progress, but please understand, I accept that you guys are a work in progress too. And let's, instead of, you know, people, you know, going against each other, you know, which is a great way to bring out the best of circumstances, what happens when you pull these resources, pull, pull all this passion, all this energy, and turn it into something amazing? You're probably the only one on the planet who can do this, Scorpio. But my, that's what my heart feels here, is that your heart is wanting to be with your people. Like you want to be with people who get you. And there are people out there who want to be with you. Because even though you are a work in progress, Scorpio, whatever it is you're doing, it's something very valuable and very precious. And people are noticing that. Your heart is noticing that. And you need to be aware of that. You need to be aware of how valuable you are. Your heart wants you to know. It's sending a loud signal. Hey, dear Scorpio, I am your heart. You don't have a life without me. Thank you very much. I want you to know that uh, you are awesome. You're doing a great job. And I'm here at your heart core doing an amazing job. We are a work in progress. We are evolving. And we are being appreciated by others. And you are appreciating the others, too. We don't want to forget that. We don't want to, let's just say, think that you've got everything figured out. If you think of yourself as a work in progress and that we are going through some very fortuitous times for you, Scorpio, to evolve and grow and get yourself closer and closer to the people or a person who really, really gets you. Like, it's probably time, this is not a cups card, but it could be a really good time for you to really integrate, really, really, really integrate 
with yourself and the world and particularly with a significant other this is not a relationship reading okay but just it's like that kind of love is as love does where it isn't all romance and flowers and fairy tales and poetry and chocolate it's much more about uh, that deep mutual appreciation of self and others and others and self in a team environment what are you bringing in with you okay more pentacles here with the nine of pentacles it's it feels like you kind of understand this already and it's starting to show it's like part of you has been craving this for a long time and you've got certain hallmarks and let's say credentials that indicate that you're already in a state of what i would call uh like independent wealth where you're not having to be totally beholden to other people's and other systems you're like self-sustaining it's almost like being self-employed it's almost the energy of uh, not only being self-employed, but successfully self-employed. And that's kind of like like maybe a business model or a blueprint for life that you're bringing in with you right now. Like this is kind of, let's say, let's just say here you are, you're watching the video, Terra Illumination, blah, 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 and you walk into the room. Hi. Well, yeah, I'm very, very independently minded and I'd like to stay and grow and improve this way. I have a lot of gifts and talents that uh, could be, let's say, monetized in this way uh, in terms of love, home, family, career, uh, whatever it is, a business or something. And I want to make the most of it. Thank you very much. So I feel this is very wholesome energy in which to uh, come into the meeting with which to come into the meeting okay so i'm kind of happy for you i'm kind of jealous of you scorpio quite frankly with this reading so let's have a look what about the now okay well to me it feels like you're riding the wave maybe it's maybe you're really consciously aware of it uh, and you have already been living for the last six months or the last year or something like that in a way that you have been fostering and nurturing this energy of uh, growing, growing wealth, and deliberately surrounding yourself with talent, placing yourself more and more in alignment with people who love you and appreciate you, and people with whom you can share your love and appreciation. And it works. It works. It works. It's like fertilizer. And, uh, you know, success breeds success. That's the kind of energy that I'm feeling here. I'm not saying it's just like all of a sudden you win the lottery. This is much more about self-nurture, self-investment, uh, creating your wealth from the inside out uh, because your skills are being challenged and taken to their limits and it's bringing out the best in you. And somehow or other, Scorpio, you are figuring it out. And part of you is saying, well, it's about time. We could say this was fated. In other words, you could look back decades to say, well, when I was born, I always felt this was going to happen. It's just taken a really long time. And so, yeah, you could say like, oh, well, I could just look at my astrology chart and it's obvious that this was going to happen here in March 2018. Cool. Why didn't anybody else figure that out? Well, you know, there's only so much you can do in one lifetime with tarot and astrology. But right now what I'm feeling is that you're on the crest of the wave. You know it. You're doing a good job. You know you've got to, done a good job to get here, and you're going to continue to, to do a good job. Even when the waves go up and down, you're still maximizing the energy of the wave because all waves come up and they go down, up, down. You can't surf one wave forever. So it's always being prepared for when are you going to come down, come out of that wave, turn back, and realign yourself to come back with the next one, just like all life cycles. You know, even the planets, they have lunar cycles every 28 days, Saturn cycles every whatever it is, two and a half years, you know, and when Uranus moving around with, with Pluto, you know, a Pluto cycle is about 250 years. Can you believe that? Yeah. So there you go. When Pluto was in Taurus, that was about a 35 year transit. Can you imagine that? The moon is two and a half days. Pluto in Taurus, that was about 35 years. 
Pluto and Scorpio, that was about 12 years. It's still a huge transit. And you're riding the wave, okay? Your decisions, what about that? So to me, it seems like you're deliberately making decisions that incrementally count brick by brick by brick, where it's part of a plan to, let's say, invest in your future. I don't see this as hoarding. I see this as much more as like building a power base, brick by brick, not building an ugly, gray, miserable fortress, but more like building a home or building a castle or building uh, independent wealth, building real estate, building intellectual property, whatever it is that you're doing uh, with your growth and your talents and your resources here and investing in the future one little brick at a time. Literally, it's like uh, like a long-term investment plan where every day, every week, every month, you're constantly putting something in the pot for the retirement later on one day, perhaps. Who knows? So how are we going to continue to do that effectively? Because it looks like you're kind of on path already. Okay. I think this is a time to, let's say, bring out the attitude of gratitude, where to make this, to make, to continue to make these decisions effectively uh, so that it doesn't become just a sort of a routine habit. It becomes almost like a sacred duty where, you know, even though long extensive periods of like saving for the future or building a plan or growing a business, yeah, things might get tedious for a while. But if you understand at the core about how incredibly lucky you are, Scorpio, in some ways, seems to me like you have an awful lot going on here that, a lot, that others don't and they may never have. So in some ways, it's very, very lucky, to, even though the process of building and growing and nurturing yourself over the long term might have some sense of tedium with it. And maybe you wish you could just have everything fixed and solid and done right now. My feeling is that this is an ongoing process and it's continuous. The ups and the downs, the ups and the downs, literally like the Olympic skiing things. You're whoosh, or maybe if there's Olympic surfing, I don't know. But always, always understanding that there's work involved. There's an investment. You're always going to learn more and more from each challenge as you go and grow from there. Understanding how incredibly lucky you are to have this happiness from the inside out. In other words, your happiness is not dependent on anyone else. And so long as you stick with this plan. Okay. It almost gets to the point where you could be like an authority at this. That's what I'm feeling here with the King of Swords, where you, Scorpios, could actually be a living example of this formula. In other words, if you think of this as like one of those how-to business book things or how to improve your life, step one, how to do little, step two, and blah, 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 step three, da, 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 and you realize, oh my gosh, it is a formula. And then you could become an authority that where like people would say to you like, Scorpio, how do you do that? How do you do what you do? How do you get to have all that independence and wealth and abundance that's tangible and you have the happiness from the inside out? It's just like lucky you, lucky you. You got it all. And you'd say, well, it's work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It takes long-term commitment, long-term investment, brick by brick. Very important to remember, surround yourself with talent. Be with people who love, be with people who love you. Invest in each other, nurture each other, grow together. It's a business model. I'm just, I'm just trying to give you an example, Scorpio, but you become a living example, an authority in this field, in the field of living a good life, of a life well lived, where if somebody else needs help to understand this, you can provide that literally by saying, well, just watch me or follow me or I'll give you tips. Read uh, book number four, tip number seven. There you go. Do that. Okay. So what happens if you wig out and you just get wiped out and exhausted and you think this is just a big tedious drag, the whole thing. Well, you lose all that. You lose the, the aura. You lose the glowing aura of the love and the happiness that comes out from you from the inside out, okay? People who are happy from the inside out have amazing auras, okay? Typically, that would be like multicolored, like a glowing disco ball of love. Or there might be a, a rich abundance of blues 
or or perhaps magentas and pinks and violets or gold and white. It could be anything like that. But when you mess up and you start to think this is just a grind, life is just a tedious grind. I just have to grab what I can get uh, day to day and it sucks. Then all of a sudden you lose respect for yourself. Other people lose respect for you and you just become like an emotional drag and dead weight for yourself and everybody else. But when you think of it as a long-term investment program and it's worth the effort, it's worth the work, then you're acting and behaving as a living example of someone who's dignified and doing that uh, outwardly, understandable from the outside. Again, like an official, someone who is literally an authority in that field, someone who has command over their heart, over their emotions, someone who understands how incredibly lucky and fortunate they are to have the chance the, to have happiness from the inside out and have a formula for that to work okay prospects let's have a look okay <laughs> like it never stops people let's just like i keep telling you everybody it's so simple you just get up in the morning live your life invoke your angels bring them in as a team think of it as a team effort Surround yourself with talent. Understand that it's all on you in the end anyway. Learn how to ride the waves when it gets bumpy. Sure, yeah. Uh, but learn, learn, learn and grow. Learn and grow, learn and grow. Invest, 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 invest for the future. Always see every challenge as a chance for you to grow and evolve. Okay, so I was just trying to like talk as though I was the Scorpio King of Swords here. So I'm just telling you, man, it's a formula. It's a formula. It never stops. You don't want to work harder and harder and harder. You want to work smarter and smarter and smarter. Continue to invest. Invest in your talents, your gifts, and resources. Create your own happiness from the inside out. Thank you very much. Bye. You know, there you go. And he says, and he says, well, I, I was just going to say that too. Okay? So it's almost like <laughs> you become your own best buddy. And you still have really good mates. Surround yourself with talent. Invest, invest, invest. Awesome. Well done, Scorpio. All the best. I hope you make the most of this and reinterpret however you want. Okay? It could be a completely different reading uh, from someone else's perspective. All right. Bye now.